Hi. As you all know, I'm an ardent sports fan. Not just of the Gladiator games, but of all sports. Rugby union, rugby league, athletics, and I'm a golf fanatic. So you can imagine what a great thrill it is for me to be here, right in the middle of one of the world's most famous cricket grounds, the SCG, right here in Sydney. This is one of the grounds which for almost a century has produced the most traditional of Anglo-Australian conflicts, the Ashes. Unfortunately, in recent years, England haven't fared so well. So that's why I'm here today, along with the rest of the British gladiators, to put things right. host of the British Gladiators. Thank you very much, Kimberly. And can I say, first of all, to all you Aussies watching out there, good day. <laughs> and a warm welcome to all you Brits at home watching. And also, can I say, what a great pleasure it is to be here in Australia. Well, we are very happy to have you here. There is an amazing buzz in the arena tonight, and rightly so, because this is the first ever Ashes series of Gladiators. That's right, and tonight's show promises to be very, very explosive. We've got the best challengers from Australia facing the best of us British challengers. That's right, and they will be taking on a combined team of gladiators from both countries. And I think you'll agree, John, the Ashes is a great sporting tradition. And can I say, in a typically British manner, we wish you and all your contenders the very, very best. Well, thank you very much, and the same to you and yours. Thank you, Kimberly. Okay, now let's meet the people that matter. From Australia, Kerry Warman. And from the UK, Karen Sampi. Australia's Kerry Warman is a 27-year-old librarian from Brisbane, a quarter-finalist in Australian Glads. Britain's Karen Sampi is a student from Yorkshire. She's 21 and a British Championship runner-up. Looking at their stats, Kerry has an 8 centimetre height advantage and a 10 kilo weight advantage over Karen. Now, let's meet them. Come on, girls. Welcome, Karen. Welcome to Australia. Now, are you enjoying it so far? Absolutely, yeah. I've just met everyone. All the Australians are brilliant out here. I'm having a really good time. Now, you're only 21. You're a student at university. What are you studying? Uh, I'm studying sports science at Leeds Metropolitan University. Fantastic. And how did you get the time off to come over here? Um, well, I'm actually on a 10-week break from university during the summer, and uh, I've taken the time after the shooting to go around Australia and soak up a bit of the atmosphere around here. Well, that's great. Well, we hope you're ready for the challenge here tonight. It's going to be a big one. I think you'll agree. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Now, Kerry, are you feeling nervous? No, it's actually really exciting. You guys look really great out there tonight. Well, let me tell you something which... Uh, yeah, they appreciate that. Well, let me tell you something which we hope won't make you too nervous. 
you do realize that our challengers are the best before they even got onto gladiators we saw 25,000 people it took you that long to find someone that good to send over to see us aha yes 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 you will do well wish you all the best ladies and gentlemen please thank kerry and karen Hello. challenges for the evening from the UK Phil Campbell and from Australia David Wallace David Wallace is single he's from Sydney a 29 year old who works in the travel industry his hobbies include anything to do with water sports 34 year old Phil Campbell is also unmarried he's a cable TV salesman from Southampton let's look at the guys they're the same weight at 83 kilos but Phil has the advantage of an extra couple of centimeters in height now let's meet them come on guys Okay, now, Dave, before we start, us British, we have this view about what people look like from different parts of the world. The French with their onions, the Australians with their surfboards, and I'm afraid you do look like a surfer. Please tell me you're not. I'm afraid, Fash, I'm the true epitome of the Aussie surfy boy. Really? There you are? Yeah. You're definitely a homeboy. And tell me, what do you do for a living? I'm a tour manager. Does that mean tour manager as in rock stars, Elton John, uh, George Michael? No, a lot more fun than that. 1835s throughout Europe and Scandinavia. Yeah, that is a lot more fun, I can imagine. <laughs> Great stuff. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Now, Phil, I understand this isn't your first time in Australia. No, it's about 15 years ago. Uh, I was in the Navy at the time when we sailed in. We had a couple of days here. It was great. Fantastic. And you've also performed in front of royalty. Yeah, again, again, uh, when I was in the Navy at the Royal Tournament, uh, I had display work on ropes and also with the uh, field gunners, so yeah. it was good fun. All right, well, all the best to you tonight. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Fantastic to have you here in Australia. Thank you very much, guys. We wish you all the best. You will definitely need it. Off you go, get yourselves ready. Let's hear it for Phil and David. OK, as they said in the Roman times, let the games begin. A minute to win it. First of the top scores, ten. Second, five. First up the pyramid is Kerry from Australia and Karen from the UK. And trying to stop them are our gladiators Vogue from the UK and Cheetah from Australia. Well, Cheetah will be facing off Karen, who has a slight advantage, being five centimetres taller and two kilograms heavier. On the other side of the pyramid, again, the contender has a slight advantage, not only being heavier, but ten centimetres taller than Vogue. And over to our lead referee for this game, John Anderson. And without his hat, John has grey hair, blue eyes, and he's the British Olympic team coach. And he's got a very loud voice. to the contenders, the gladiators come down to play. Vogue on Kerry. Oh, and Cheetah rolls the British challenge and Kerry to the floor. And Kerry slipped through Vogue. She's heading for the summit. Vogue struggling to recover. Can she get to her? Yes, oh, Kerry's free. She's outrun the Cheetah. Ten points to Great Britain and Karen Sampy. Stole the points right from under the Aussie's nose. Meanwhile, Vogue continues to deny Australia's Kerry any part of the glory. The fair-minded Australian crowd don't like it. Vogue, one of the most tenacious gladiators in the British stable. She won't give up the points without a battle. John Anderson forcing the rules there, but Kerry's just an awkward contender. Great Britain's Karen can't be bothered to watch any more of this. Thank you. Strolls off, her work's finished, and it's a bit of a stalemate up there at the moment. Paul Marks to Vogue, who's the lighter of the two, and no points to Kerry yet. Oh, she's reached out and hit the button. Only just scores five points on the whistle. Superb performance from the British gladiator cover girl. Well, in the replay, the victorious Karen Sampy from Great Britain left Cheetah lying on the deck and out-sprinted her up the stairs to pick up the maximum. Good start for her. Here's Kimberly. 
Karen, what a start to the Battle of the Ashes. Ten points. Yeah, I'm really pleased about that. I thought if I don't get that top the first time, I'll be too tired and I'll not be able to do it. Well done. Now, Kerry, you'd certainly be happy with that. I certainly am. I didn't want to have to climb all the way up there for nothing. That's for all certain. Well, Vogue tried as hard as she could to keep you from the top, but victory was yours. Yeah, no, that was like, I thought, oh, wow, fight this high up. But no, she's good. She's good. Scores after one game, Australia's Kerry 5, Great Britain's Karen 10. OK, the girls have just shown us the way to the top of the pyramid. So let's have a look how the boys get on. At the base of the pyramid, from Great Britain, is Phil. And from Australia, it's David. At the top of the pyramid, they're going to be facing, from Australia, the mighty Ahama. From Great Britain, the awesome warrior! Well, there's nothing like an unbiased crowd, and this is nothing like an unbiased crowd. Warrior, 18 centimetres taller than the Australian challenger David, and 43 kilos heavier. On the other side of the pyramid, Great Britain's Phil Campbell is giving away 8 centimetres and 14 kilos to the hammer. Contenders, ready! Gladiator! Pyramid. The Aussie David gets right in his way. David displayed some very fast footwork. Warrior goes for the big one. Oh, he misses it completely. The gamble that failed to come off. Australia's David Wallace fall like a wallaby up that pyramid for 10 points. And the Australian crowd delirious. And I think David looks quite happy as well. Well, Hammer looks to have lost his helmet. The referees will stop it. It looks like Hammer's chosen not to hear the whistle. Pull up, Hammer! Now put your helmet back on. Australian referee John Forsyth retrieves Three, his protective headgear. Two, 30 seconds left one. on the clock. Here we go. And Phil starts his climb again. He doesn't want the hammer down on his head, but Hammer rolls him to the ground. Hammer slow to release Phil as well. Hammer back to his position. Phil again. But he can't forge a way past that hammer. Hammer lazily rolls the British contender to the deck again. And time is running down for Phil. Get up, get up, Hammer slow to release him again. And a dejected warrior on the left there. Phil still scheming, but the clock's not on his side. And nor are the Australians. Oh, ridiculous after the whistle dive from Hammer. The crowd approving of it, though. In the replay, David Wallace had the wherewithal to run rings round Warrior, so Warrior decided to go for the big takedown. He goes right over the top, allowing David a free run for 10 points. And Hammer shows Warrior how it's done, but only after the whistle is blown. Here's Fash. You know, Hammer has one heck of a reputation. I mean, when he hits you, you don't get up. Did you feel that way? Yeah, he hits hard, but I got up. <laughs> well done. OK, Hammer. That was some amazing stuff up there. Well, the harder I had to tackle because Phil's such a great competitor. He's probably one of the best I've come up against the pyramid. I just like to say to Phil, I know he's a mad rug rug rugby fan, but the pyramid's a whole new league. Thanks very much. David, they were the fastest 10 points I think anybody in Gladiators has ever seen. Well, it's no secret, it was the fear of God. I just thought if he got a hold of me, I was history. So I just had to outmaneuver him, and that was all I did. Just go. Warrior, now I know normally the pyramid is not your game, but you've got to be a little bit disappointed with yourself. John, I'm absolutely disgusted with the performance there. It's not one of my games. I, I'll make up for that in the games that I play, like Powerball and Gauntlet. But could I have a really big boo from all the crowd because I deserve it? Thank you. Big boo, please. Thank you, because I deserve it. He'll be back. After one game, David from Australia scores 10. Phil from Great Britain, nil. Well, on their days off, the Gladiators got to do some sightseeing. Let's catch up with Hunter. Well, I might be down under, but right now, I'm on top of the world. Because I'm standing on one of the seven wonders of the modern world, a tribute to British engineering and Australian craftsmanship, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. This bridge is closer to my heart than I first originally thought. Although it was designed by an Australian, JJ Bradfield, it was engineered by Dorman Long and Company of Middlesbrough, which is where I was born. Dorman Long and Company built its smaller brother, the Tyne Bridge of Newcastle. Do you see the resemblance? 
The total surface area of this bridge would cover about 60 soccer pitches. Can you imagine painting all this and finding out it's the wrong colour? It's a chance for a challenger to take a swing at a gladiator. Hang tight, tight. It's ten points if the contender can avoid the gladiator and swing across to the other platform. Five points for hanging tough in the scoring zone. And the first up from Australia is Kerry. And from the UK, it's a lightning. Lightning defeated hang tough expert but smaller than Kerry in the weight and height departments but then she is four years younger over to our referee Mike let's meet our Australian referee Mike Whitney a former test cricketer challenger are you ready gladiator are you ready Three, two, one. The girls swing out, and for Kerry, this event is going to feel longer than an episode of Neighbours. Lightning will be looking to strike fear into the hearts of all the Australian challengers in this test series. Oh, and I think the camera operator is swinging about as much as the girls. Kerry one rings. Tries to go past Lightning, but Lightning recovers. Kerry again. And Lightning can't get at her with a feet. Kerry swings by again. Can Lightning recover again? Oh, she's out of position. Kerry one ringed. She gets her act together again, and she's there. Oh, look at that. Lightning's undefeated reign is over. Ten points to the Australian contender. Hang tough, her favourite event, and that's why. Well, as Lightning dismounts from the rings, let's see that again. And Kerry outmanoeuvres Lightning on the swing. Lightning can't possibly get back, and after a brief moment's faltering, Kerry comes in to land. Well, what an incredible effort. The crowd was going wild. Ten oh. points, Kerry. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, crowd! Oh. Oh, right behind you. Did that do it for you? I, I thought, gee, after that effort, I've got to do something good. Well, you certainly managed to steer clear of her that time. I am very pleased to say that is the first time I've seen Lightning miss her prey. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess I'm what? For it. Well, we're glad we were here for it too, because uh, that was an incredible effort. Lightning, how many times have you played Hang Tough? Oh, quite a few times actually, but I did try to get to grips up there. But um, it's a brand new challenge for me on this one. But she did very well indeed. We were going like this and I just I couldn't know. believe it. Well done. Kerry just went all the way for Australia. So now let's see if Karen can do the same for the UK up against Blade. Well, take a look at this. Out lightning, lightning here. And this is Blade. She cuts a very handsome figure. She's eight years older than her opponent, five centimeters shorter, but around five kilos heavier. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? Three, two, one. The Blade doesn't look dull. She aims to cut Karen out of the points. Karen comes from a gymnastic background, but Hank Tuff, not one of her favourites. Blade marking the scoring zone, but Karen looking as if she's aiming straight for the Gladiator. Yep. Missed that time. Oh, Blade's got her! And Kerry's not in the scoring zone. She's defending with her legs, and Blade trying to knock Karen's legs up like a girl guy. Karen needs to escape the Gladiator's clutches and get in the scoring zone if she's to pull any points. Hanging Tuff, well, at the moment, Blade manoeuvring herself to get her weight. Yes, there she is. She brings the full weight to bear, cuts her down with ease. Good performance from Blade. It can't be easy for the Aussie glads wearing those tin foil costumes. Well, if we look at that takedown again, Blade locks onto Karen, wraps her up with arms and legs, yanks on her shoulder, and Karen surrenders. But Karen looks to be hurt. Blade's there. The medics have been summoned. Karen's shoulder took a mighty wrench. Blade's knee goes into her side, and if that wasn't enough, she lands very awkwardly face first. Yes, the medics have worked their magic, and thankfully the great British contender is back on her feet. No one more happy to see that than Blade. Karen, a runner-up in the 1994 United Kingdom Gladiator Championship, but she's there now with well, Fash. Are you all right, Karen? Yeah, I'm fine. I've just got a bit of a kick in my ribcage. 
nothing too serious. I'll be all right. You tried to hang on, didn't you? I did, yeah. We had a bit of a tussle up there, but <laughs> yeah, she got me in the end. It looked like you were actually holding her leg. You were trying to hold her. Yeah, it was just a bit of a defensive tactic, I suppose, to keep um, my legs a little bit higher than hers, but uh, she got me. <laughs> Fair and square. Wow, good stuff, eh? Uh, she's a great uh, competitor, and uh, it's horrible to see someone get hurt, but I wish her luck for the rest of the programme. After two games, Australia's Kerry has 15, Great Britain's Karen, 10. Now it's back to Sydney. This bridge is affectionately known as the Sydney Coat Hanger. It was completed in 1932 after six years of construction. There are over six million rivets on this bridge, and not one has been replaced in over 60 years since it's been built. Did you know that in the midsummer heat, the bridge expands by over eight feet, so they've got to put huge rollers each side so that it can expand backwards? Yeah, that's nothing. My stomach expands more than that after lunch. Well, the Brits are starting to fall behind, so now let's see if Phil can turn the tide for the UK in Hang Tough up against Taipan. Taipan, a silent but deadly Australian gladiator, a fraction taller than Phil but over 23 kilos heavier. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator! Are you ready? Three, two, one! Well, I think the Australian referee swallowed his whistle there. Phil swinging well, keeping out of the gladiator's path. He swung past Taipan, and Taipan trying to get back to cover the platform. Phil very fast. Oh, but he's one ringed. Can he get there? He needs to get another ring. And Taipan is right on the platform there. He touches the platform, and that would disqualify him in Great Britain. Silver-suited Taipan looking more like a, a saucepan as he hangs there. And Phil taking nothing for granted, looking to grab the maximum points, but being marked out on the platform by Taipan. Phil needs to build some impetus here for one giant swing for victory, getting his legs going to generate... Oh, Taipan's dropped! The ref stopped it. At least a couple of people in the crowd are pleased with that. Just as Phil was building up for a final assault on the platform, Taipan lost his grip on the rings and the ref blows up for some reason. Can you please clarify the situation for us? Yes, John and I have conferred and uh, the rule states that no competitor or no gladiator can move back and touch his own platform or use it to stop the opposition. We'll have to disqualify Taipan. Ten Phil! points. Ten points! Not the way you wanted it. No, I didn't want it like that. I didn't want it like that. I wanted to get across. What's the matter with these Aussies, eh? Listen, we're going to win, so you might as well get used to it, all right? OK, thanks very much, Phil. Well, Taipan, how do you feel about that? Very disappointed. He did well to get his... Uh, well, he didn't do well to get his points, but, hey, he got them. Do you feel that you touched the platform yourself? I did feel myself touch the platform, but I don't think that was uh, a case of giving him full 10 points. Well, referee gave him 10 points. That's the way it is. Let's hear it for Taipan. Well, from one ungracious gladiator who needs a haircut, by the way, to another, the wild and wily Wolfman. And he must be enjoying this welcome, the kind of welcome he gets back home. Earlier, Australia's David told us how he thought he'd do tonight. Looking forward to tonight. I think I'll do well. I've got a few surprises up my sleeve. And the second of our male contenders. He's on maximum points of 10 from Australia. It's David. But unfortunately for him, he's going to be up against the man we all fear. Yes, it's the Wolfman. There's our Wolfie going down badly down under. Five centimetres taller, seven kilos heavier than David and many years older. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? Three, two, one. And David and Wolf swing out. David, the runner-up in the first series of Australian Gladiators, swinging nicely. Oh, and straight into trouble with the Wolf. He comes away from that scrap unscathed. Oh, the Wolf one ringed. And so's David, both hanging around as if they've got nothing better to do. But David is not in the scoring zone. 
David Moore keen to give us a display than to go for the points. And Wolf attacks again. Oh, he's wrapped him up and shows the crowd how easy it is. Tries to wrench him off. Oh, the Wolf has fallen. The crowd love it. The Wolf snatches defeat from the jaws of victory. But the Australian still not in the scoring zone. Oh, have that. Even brought order to my eyes. The crowd in sense, but David still not in the scoring zone. Time running down for him. David intent on showing us the other side of his talent, but he's scored no points here. The referee telling him to move on, but he's run out of time just as the crowd runs out of patience. Well, in the replay, Wolf was just too keen to wrench David off and finished himself off instead. David, you were just hanging around. I couldn't quite make it to the red zone, but I felt just as good to watch the, watch the wall fall to the ground. That was just as good as 10 points. I bet it was. Wolfman, you fell off. You couldn't stay up there. Hey, man. He was very lucky. Hey, hey. I'm not a bad sport. I'm not a bad sport. I will shake his hand. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, guess they've never seen him pull that stunt in Australia. Get off the arena! Get off! Well, there's no doubt what she thinks. After two games, Australia and Great Britain are neck and neck on ten each. Bring it on well, the pandemonium continues. Wolf yeah. furious with the ref. Oh, he's furious with the sweets he's been thrown. He's not into dolly mixtures. Oh, he's clearly furious with that poster and using his belt in origami to great uh, effect there. Well, join us after the break for Clash for the Ashes. The Ashes. The Ashes. It's a race to the top if a gladiator doesn't make you drop. Next up, the wall. The wall. First to the top scores 10 points. Second, I. Karen will be pursued by the Australian gladiator Delta. While Kerry will be trying to keep clear of the British gladiator Jet. Let's compare gladiator stats. The Australian Delta is younger than Jet but fractionally taller and heavier. Jet also smaller than a challenger Kerry. Delta is the same height and five kilos heavier than Karen. Contenders, you will go on my whistle. Gladiators, you will go on Mike's whistle. Three, two, one. So it's Karen from Great Britain on the left of the wall and Australia's Kerry on the right. This Australian wall very much like our own. Here come the glads. Jet after Kerry and Delta chasing Karen. And Kerry climbing strongly. Negotiates the overhang and Delta only just missing Karen's ankle. Kerry and Green in front, leaving Jet in her wake. And she's going to be first over. Delta's got Karen, pulls her from the wall. And the British girl's not having a good time and Jet is furious with herself. The crowd are happy. So's Kerry and Delta. In the replay, Jet never really got within stripping distance of Kerry on that ball, and I don't think I've ever seen her so angry. Kerry, congratulations. You got those valuable points. Yeah, aren't they just? <laughs> How does it feel to be up the top of the wall here? This is the second time I've nailed the wall, and man, it's as good as the first. Uh, this, is, this is really good. I'm happy with that one. Now, Karen, you needed those ten points. Uh, I loved it. Try my hardest, but she was on my tail as soon as the whistle went. Well, Delta, you do have an advantage because you know this course very well, but you were out to get her, weren't you? Oh, I certainly was, Kimberly. I mean, I'm just having fun, and it's a pleasure to climb a wall with Jet. She's well known. But I know you're a uni student, but the walls are my best subject. <laughs> So, after three games in this battle for the Ashes, Australia have 25 points, while Great Britain is stuck on 10. Gladiators. Do you know if you fell in there now? Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I'd do? What? Laugh. I'd shout to Hunter, Hunter! <laughs> Jets fell in. And he'd do nothing. No, he'd do nothing either. Oh, no. Did you know that there are more shark attacks off the coast of Sydney than anywhere else in Australia? They're fantastic creatures, aren't they? Such a mean face. 
talking of mean faces. I'm hungry. Is this where I'm going to have lunch? Waiter, I'll have that one. Now, hang on a minute, Wolf. Hang on a minute. This is the Sydney Aquarium. Thousands of exotic fish from all over Australia. Wow. <laughs> Look at that one. Black and white stripes and a fish face. That reminds me of John Anderson. <laughs> well, it's lucky for Wolf. John hasn't seen that piece of film yet. Mind you, he's got a point. And next up to climb that dreaded wall from the UK is a Phil. And he's going to be chased by our Australian gladiator, a Condor. And on the other side, it's David. And from the UK, it's the Hunter. Both gladiators, superb wall technicians. Hunter by far the younger and bigger of the two. He's also 33 kilos heavier than David Wallace, while Condor is 14 kilos heavier than Phil. Three, two, one! Phil on the left for Great Britain. Australia's David on the right-hand side. The British stable have had only limited practice on this wall. And the glads are up and at them. Hunter getting to grips with it well. Condor's flown up here a few times in the past, but for Phil to escape Condor can only be a pipe dream. Hunter on, David, oh, he's got his ankle, he stripped him off, oh, and Condor gets a face full of Phil as he strips him from the wall, so it's not always a great view from up there. Looking at it again, Hunter grabs that leg and affects the takedown almost in one swift movement. Well, Dave, not quite so quick getting up there as you were the pyramid. No, I thought I, uh, once I got over the first five seconds, but uh, it was just too quick for me. And uh, I slipped a little bit, but just too fast. Boy, he flew up there. I could hear him snorting behind me. <laughs> Hunter? Yeah. Well, now the engine's rolling, John. I've been uh, psyching up for a long time for this one. I just saw his shoelace hanging down, and uh, that was my ticket to pull him off, I think. You certainly got your prey this time. Well done. Phil, another fast one behind you there. Absolutely. I didn't expect that, actually, John, because I do like the wall, but uh, good. Good climber. Condor, very fast. Thanks, John. I hear Phil, is, uh, he sells cable TV, but I'm better at aerials. And better at dipping his head in a bucket of peroxide. Scores after three games remain ten apiece. Well, here we are in Australia, and as you can see, the weather's dreadful. Yeah, where's my coat? It looks like rain. We all went to see the final of the Australian series, and it was a really good show. The gladiators are very, very tough. Yeah, oh, very they weren't very good, Warrior, but uh, they haven't seen the British secret weapon. Oh, not a secret weapon. The rhino horn. Now, let's show them what happens when we push the horn. Please do not oh. adjust your set to home, ladies and gentlemen. Did you see that? Oh. oh. Aussies, you've been warned. Forget the London Bridge and forget the Sydney Harbour Bridge because this is the big one. Suspension and bridge. A successful crossing in under a minute is rewarded with 10 points. And here's what Ozzy Carey had to say about the Poms. Uh, UK gladiators, um, don't like them, but I'll give them as much respect as I give our gladiators. And the first up to attempt to cross the bridge is a Carey. <laughs> and she's going to be facing, uh, from the UK, uh, Nightshade. Nightshade, one of the most skilled and formidable gladiators in the world. Five centimetres taller than Kerry and three kilos heavier. Back down to Mike. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? Three, two, one. And Nightshade comes sprinting out for work. Oh, and gets the job done in record time. Kerry swatted from the bridge like a pesky fly. And Nightshade deserves to take a bow for that blockbuster performance. The crowd stunned by the home defeat, but not as stunned as Kerry. Nightshade enjoyed it, Kerry endured it. A smack round the jobs and a flick of the hammerhead, and Kerry met her Waterloo on the bridge. So tell me, Kerry, what's the hardest part about this game? Um, the stare down at the start. <laughs> OK, it's also hard when Nightshade is, like, moving the bridge around for you. Uh, that's part and parcel of it. You don't actually notice because you're moving around yourself. All right, well, it was a good clean fight, Nightshade. You deserved that one. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Nightshade and Kerry. Well, in England, it would be the right way up. Next up on Suspension Bridge, we have Karen from the UK, and she's up against the tremendous...
Storm. This is the Storm Karen has to weather. She's shorter than the British contender and only one kilo heavier. No Storm in a teacup, this one. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? Three, two, one. And the Storm blows in from the east. Karen squares up to her. Oh, and gets caught with a good hook from Storm. Karen's lost it. No, she hasn't. She's pushed her over and nipped in the back way. Incredible victory for Karen. Ten points, and isn't she pleased? And aren't they wrong? Looking at it again, this time from Storm's helmet cam. Karen has a jab, takes a couple of swings from Storm. It all gets a bit clumsy up there, and Karen slips by. Almost unnoticed for that remarkable conquest for Great Britain. Well, Karen, congratulations. That's one storm that blew over very quickly. Yeah, I knew she's a big girl and I knew I wasn't going to be able to hit her. I thought I'd use my cunning and just get past her. That's the name of the game, get to the other side. Do you know how many points you got? Hopefully 10. You got yourself 10 points. Well done, Karen. Storm. Obviously one of the favorites here. What happened? Well, you know, I generally like someone to stand and fight, but if you want to run, you want to run, and I guess there's going to be no rematch because I'm going to go and have some dinner. Well, while Storm slips off for a quick barbie, Kerry stays on 25, Karen blasts her way to 20. Now, last night at the show, we had a little bit of a set to, and Wolf here is going to tell you all about it. They've got this guy called Vulcan, thinks he's mean. I've seen more meat on an Oxo cube. <sighs> He's got these long dreadlocks. I'm gonna wring his neck with him. Oh, no, 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 no. We're a team. Oh, we're, we're a team, team mate. Yeah. We're all oh, gonna wring, wring his neck. neck. Mind you, he, he was, was a bit big. big tough, he was he? powerful in the what? gauntlet. He was a big boy. Oh, he, he, he was pretty power. awesome in Powerball. Oh, I was on the huh? show. I, I, yeah. I just remembered um, I've got to go to the gym. I need to get Guys, my nails need really clipping. Guys, you see? We're a team. Guys. Oh, no. And here he is, Vulcan, so called because the Aussies think he's the size of an alien planet. Well, looking at his stats, he's 10 centimetres taller than his challenger and over 30 kilos heavier. And here's what our man of the moment, Phil, thinks about life down under. Here in Australia, I love this country. It's got, it's got everything. I mean, we listen to the news this morning. We've got snowfall down south. We've got 31 degrees up north. Absolutely fabulous. I love it, yeah. But does he love it so much Three, when he's on two, the suspension one. bridge facing the Vulcan? And Vulcan with a couple to the chops and oh. Phil having to go back. Oh, he's got him! Phil flattened and floored. Vulcan dusts his hands off. The crowd impressed by that performance. Hey, give me a go! Get out! Don't touch me. Good to see a nice tolerant attitude from Vulcan there in the replay we see Vulcan pushing forward all the time and Phil's only escape route is down Well Phil Not what you're used to not very good No, it wasn't very good and actually it was like but a crowd like this guy so much I thought well, I'll take a dive so we look good. You know what I mean? I don't believe that He got me with good good three jabs. I was going to sideways every time and then off balance good for him Vulcan, congratulations. Yeah, thank you, Johnny. There was for Gladiator Pride. Let me tell you something. That wolf is the disgrace. Well, we'd agree with that. And there's Wolf holding up that banner. But you know, you know, Vulcan, if the truth be known, in Great Britain, he's very, very popular. Because of in Great Britain, fashion who they've never seen me yet by the time they see me they will forget about that wolf man and the last of our male contenders up is a david and from great britain it's a rhino Rhino established himself superbly in the 1995 Gladiator season in Great Britain, five centimetres taller than his challenger and 37 kilos heavier. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? Three, two, one. 
And here they come to ruck and roll. Rhino charges out, getting stuck in immediately, but David looks happy to mix it. Driving the Rhino back, leaning into it. The referee reminding David he has to hit rather than push. Rhino is all tussle, hustle and muscle. And that deadly combination gets the work done. And at last, the British contingent have got something to shout about. There's the famous Rhino Stomp, and obviously everyone delighted with his performance. David tries to throw his weight around on the bridge, but finds that Rhino is better equipped to throw it around for him. So where do you think your mistake lay? Getting up there in the first place. Yes, you took the words right out of my mouth. Rhino, how much do you weigh? Um, I'm about 18 stone. So, show us your leg muscles. I'm so impressed. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, ready to do that. No, I won't, David. Now, uh, I saw you comparing sizes before. Yes, quite a comparison. <laughs> well, let's say about that, the better. Uh, after four games, the scores stay the same. 10-10, back to Fash with Kimbo. So far, they've been taking on the Gladiators. But now, the challengers go head-to-head -head in the Eliminator. Coming next. The Ashes. The Ashes. Welcome back. And these superb motorbikes are the prizes which await the winners of the Ashes series. Here's Fash. As the Australian challengers and the British challengers line up, national pride is really at stake in the Eliminator. The Eliminator. First to the finish wins a place in the Ashes final. Now, Karen, you love the Eliminator. Yeah, I do like the Eliminator. It's the ultimate assault course, and I love going over assault courses. Um, I hope it's going to be a close one, this one. Now, you do understand that Kerry actually has a two and a half second start. Um, that's nothing. No, you're absolutely right. It is nothing. Kerry, are you confident? Uh, I'm as confident as I have been going into all of the other games, and they've gone well, so we'll see how we go with this one. Kerry, Australia's counting on you. Karen, the UK is counting on you, and it's over to John Anderson. Kerry, you will go on my whistle. Karen, you will go on Mike's whistle. Three, two, one. Australia sets off for the high and low hurdles. Here comes Great Britain, and already Karen in the colours of the mother country, red, white and blue, is eating into that two and a half second lead. So much so that they hit the rope at the same time. Karen heaves herself to the top and into the lead. Next, the overhead hand ladder. And Karen finishes the hand ladder and scoots over the rolling beams. Next comes the scramble nets, but Kerry from Australia really making hard work at the ladder. Kerry awkward over the rollers, but finally makes it to the nets. Karen nearly at the top now. She'll sprint to the furthest zip line, so long as the Australian cameraman doesn't get in the way. Onto the zip and the awaiting crash match below. Karen Sampy from Yorkshire lands smoothly. Meanwhile, Kerry is still struggling to the top of the net. Balance beam ahead. This is no time to lose your concentration or your focus, especially with Kerry on the zip. Karen finishes the balance beam in style. Next is the Travelator. This is where she needs to dig deep. She knows she'll only get one clean, unhurried run at it. She pumps it up. It's agonizing. Keep going. Keep going, girl. She's going to make it only just by the skin of her fingers. She's done it for Great Britain. Karen Sharpie proves that the Poms are a force to be reckoned with on Gladiators. Here comes Australia's Kerry. Her fellow countrymen will be disappointed with her performance on this eliminator. She never really had the quality to match Karen in the final analysis. Kerry girds herself for one last push. Good advice from John Anderson. Kerry goes up the Travelator. Can she make it? Oh, yes, she's there. A runner-up for Australia. Kimberly and Karen waiting patiently for her. Over here, Kerry. Well done. What a fight. Karen, you were fantastic. Uh, yeah, I caught her very early on. That Travelator had some problems. I really had to grit my teeth and dig in. And might I say, I can tell you're a gymnast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kerry, where did you have the most problems? Just didn't run hard enough. That's it. She was very, very quick, wasn't she? Yeah, I mean, you play all the games, you do well. It means nothing. You come down here 
you've got all these obstacles. You've got to run hard. Someone ran harder than someone else. She certainly did. Well, let me tell you, you've done Great Britain proud tonight. Well done. You've got through the first heat. Now you're into the final. Wow, what an effort. You came from behind as well. That was just great. Now I've got a little something for you. This is for you, the winner. Is it heavy enough? <laughs> and Kerry, a great performance and a fantastic challenger. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Kerry and Karen. Well, as the Australian crowd reluctantly celebrate a great British victory, let's find out what the Aussie Glads think of our gladiators. I think the UK Glads are great and uh, they were our idols because we had no one else to copy and um, and it's it's really nice to actually meet them finally after seeing them on uh, paper and uh, and on video. I think the UK Gladiators are, you know, the best bunch of, uh, of guys and, and, and girls I've ever met. Um, they're really down to earth, uh, very professional in what they do, very competitive and uh, you know, very serious in uh, every every game they play. So they get so serious and very, very good bunch of, bunch of people. I think they're all wonderful. I've learned a lot from them, especially Nightshare because she's a jeweller like myself. And they all seem very, very friendly and helpful. The gladiators from the UK have been fantastic. I think they've been everything that um, I've expected and more. Uh, they've been gracious, they've been wonderful, and they've also been very helpful. Okay, Phil from Great Britain, David from Australia. You both got 10 points, so there's no head start for anybody. How do you think you're gonna do, Phil? It's hard to say, John. I mean, there's uh, eight different pieces out there. You got the beams, you got the ropes, you got the cargo net. Just one mistake on any of them, and it's anybody's. We're that close, you know. Is there any part of the, the eliminator that you're actually worried about? Um, well, by the time you get to the travel here, your legs are pumping. You know, they really are. So <laughs> let's just hope we've got enough steam left. That's all I can say. Okay. Dave, any part of the dreaded eliminator that you're worried about? Yeah, that's what Phil said. I mean, there's eight different pieces of apparatus. And that travel is spinning at a million miles an hour and your legs are like jelly at the end of it. So you just got to keep pump, pump, pump and hope you get to the top. Okay, Phil, we wish you all the best. Dave, we wish you all the best. Let's go over to our referee, Mike Whitney. <laughs> Phil and David, you will both go on my whistle. Challengers, are you ready? Three, two, one. This is going to be a close one. Skill, strength, speed and style will be tested to the ultimate over the next 60 seconds. They finish the hurdles together and reach the road together. Phil by far the heavier of the two contenders. On to the handbikes now. A cruel, agonising, stamina-sapping piece of kit. And Phil looks to have the lead. Across the beams first, but David very fast over the rollers, and once again it's neck and neck. The Australian net looks to be strong, much looser than the British scramble net. That will suit the home contender, and as you can see, David is pouring his way into the lead. David gets to the top, Australia are in the lead and will be first to the zip. David on the line with no sign of Phil. Here he comes. And as David crashes to the mats with a spectacular roll, David moves to the balance beam. Phil touches down, David Wallace from Sydney very fast over the balance beam, drops down for the final burst, here he comes. Oh, and Phil falls awkwardly from the beam, and David powers his way up, just fakes it to the top, and David Wallace swings into the final of his battle for the Ashes. And Phil not enjoying the travel later, he really lost it on the cargo net, and once David took the lead, he couldn't pull it back. Here comes Phil again. Come on, Phil! Yes, he makes it look easy this time. He swings through the burst. He's done Great Britain proud. Dave, congratulations. You are in our final. Thank you, Mum. Thanks, Australia. Pretty good time as well. One minute, five seconds. No, I know I can do better. I've got to do better. When, when was it where you think you actually caught Phil up? Was it the cargo net? That's where I think it was. Definitely the cargo net. I took a bit of time on those, on the spinning barrels. Didn't want to make a mistake and on the cargo net. Phil, unlucky. I think you thought you had him there. Yeah, of course, uh, when we hit the cargo net, I thought, fine, you know, here we go. But a couple of loose, loose um, uh, well, mistakes on my feet, basically. And that was it, I felt him going past me. Really made a mess of that. 
And then, of course, well, I don't really want to talk about it, actually, John. It was awful. Well, never mind. And you don't go away empty-handed, because we've got a medal here, which is for you, my friend. Congratulations, Phil. Well done. Thank you. And the winner's medal here for you, David. And we will see you in the final. Well done. Well done indeed. At the end of this first Ashes battle, the honours even. A Brit and an Aussie making the final. Well, Karen from the UK and David from Australia will be going into the Ashes final. And that will be something you won't want to miss. Well, you're right there, Kimberly. It has been a very, very exciting show. And we'll see you all next week. Good night. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Well, we can't just leave it there, can we? We're back in Brisbane in a few moments when we rejoin the Gladiators for the second Ashes Heat. That's next on Challenge. Well, next over on Pick, Drugs, Immigration and Terrorism in Border Security, USA.